Welcome back to Hashtag Fish, the channel where we teach the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, we'll talk about shrimp feeds, the different ingredients that make up the feed and what you should watch out for when purchasing shrimp feeds. Please check the different chapters in this video and feel free to jump to the chapter you are interested the most. I'm Dr. José Domingos and I'm passionate about marine biology and aquaculture. Previously, in shrimp episode number four, we explain some of the biology behind how shrimp feed and how molting affects the shrimp. Here, I'll go over the shrimp feed itself. First, we have to have in mind that the ideal type of feed to be used depend on the shrimp size and the species. For instance, PLs and small juveniles require a higher protein content than advanced juvenile stages. In terms of species, the Pacific white shrimp, Lithopeneus venomei, is a less carnivore than the black tiger shrimp, Peneus monodon. As such, the protein content in the feed of venomei can be lower than that of monodon. In venomei, the protein content in the feed in grow-out stage is about 35%, and for monodon, it's about 45%. Fish meal is a very important ingredient that supplies the necessary proteins of shrimp diets and the minimum quantity of fish meal needed is also species dependent. For venomé, the minimum inclusion levels in the diet is about 15%, whereas for monodon, the minimum inclusion level is about 25%. And this makes venomé feed cheaper than monodon feed and also because of the lower protein and overall nitrogen content, a feed for venome is cheaper, will cause less problems in water quality, particularly the buildup of ammonia than monodon feed. This is again one of the reasons that allow venome farming to take over monodon farming in the last decades, as I have also highlighted in shrimp series very first number one. Another important aspect of the nutritional composition of the shrimp feed will depend on the type of the stocking density and the farming system we are using. If you are not sure of the different farming systems, please watch out video series number eight, where we go deeper in this topic. But in general, as we move towards more intensive systems, shrimp tend to perform better with light greater amounts of proteins, lipids, and energy in their diets, as we can see here. An increase from 33 to 42 for venome in semi-intensive to about 38 to 46 in intensive and RES systems. However, there's also research pointing out that in intensive bioflock systems, shrimp may do just as fine with 30% crude protein. But please remember that the type of protein used is often more important than the percentage of the crude protein present in the feed, because some types of Protein, say feather meal for instance, may increase the protein content of the diet when we send it to a lab for analysis. But feather meal has no nutritional value to shrimp. As you can see, again, what is really more important than protein is the amino acid composition of that protein, as the lack or insufficiency of some important amino acids like methionine for instance, will affect the growth and the health of the shrimp. Okay, okay, I understand. Fish meal, protein, and amino acid composition is very important, but what else goes in the shrimp feed? All right, I'm gonna show a couple of published feed formulations in scientific papers. Here, for instance, some of the other ingredients are soybean meal, wheat flour, broken rice, corn gluten, meat and bone meal, lecithin, crew meal and oil, which are great attractants, cholesterol, vitamins and minerals. But of course, this may vary greatly from what is actually used in a commercial shrimp feed meal, where the exact formulation may change month to month based on the price of the raw materials. In these commercial feed meals, they use specific software that calculates the least cost formulation, in theory, without compromising the nutritional requirements of the species. 
By sharing this information about shrimp feeds, by no means I suggest that you make your own shrimp feed, like my student is doing here for his particular study. What I suggest is that you use a good quality commercial shrimp feed. And from time to time, I suggest that you do send the feed to a lab for biochemical analysis, including the amino acids. If you're a small farmer, perhaps you can share this cost with your fellow local farmers that buy the same feed. At least you know what you're paying for and if what you're buying is appropriate for shrimp. Again, this is important because in recent years, and especially now after COVID-19, commodity prices have reached all-time high and this has just become worse after this Russian invasion on Ukraine. Look at the recent bulk prices for major ingredients like wheat, corn and soybean. It's crazy. We all know fish and shrimp don't eat grains. It's not even all that good for them but we are desperately trying to substitute fish meal from their diets. Fish meal is a limited commodity and that since the early 1990s, fisheries production has plateaued and many wild fisheries have collapsed. But as the demand keeps increasing and supply is limited, fish meal prices have tripled over the last 20 years and this situation will just get worse with these major increases in oil prices and disruption in supply chains. So, more than ever, we need to watch out what we are feeding our shrimp with, and this is why I recommend, again, feeds, which is most often the main cost of production, to be sent to a lab for analysis from time to time. Now, a few things you also should watch out every time when buying and receiving the feed at your farm. Number one, look at the date it was made and try to use it within the first month and no more than three months. Number two, store the feed bags on top of pallets without direct contact with the ground and inside a cool and dry place away from the sun and heat and in an enclosed space, otherwise the mice and rats will get to it. Leave space between bags and don't stack more than 10 bags on top of each other. So you don't crush the feed pellets that are in the bags on the bottom of this pile. Number three, check if the pellet size is consistent and if there's no mold or strange objects in the feed. Okay, number four is you sieve about five kilos of feed using a two millimeter mesh and weight the fines that pass through it. These fine particles should be less than 1% of weight at most because shrimp cannot eat them and they would just pollute the waters. The problems with fines are even worse when we use automated feeders. In this case, as much as 0.3% of fines can block the automated feeders because they tend to form clumps. And five, last, do a water stability test by immersing some pellets in a beaker with clean water and take notes and pictures how they disintegrate after each hour. So you build your own database. Of course, there are more scientific ways to measure pellet stability and in case you have the people and time for that, here's a couple of references to start with and you can look at them in your own time. All right, in conclusion, there's a lot of research effort to reduce or even completely eliminate the fish meal from shrimp diets primarily because of the price. And this is great. The less reliant of marine ingredients we are to produce feeds, the more sustainable aquaculture will be. And this is what we want. However, while much of this research is going on, there's still a lot that we don't know. It seems that when we go below these inclusion levels for fish meal, which I stated earlier, and start to replace it, with greater amounts of other proteins, there is suboptimal nutrition, and this can have major implications on the growth, health, and survival. This is because these alternative plant-based and terrestrial protein sources don't have the ideal amino acid profile, they have lower digestibility, palatability, and have anti-nutritional factors which are not present in fish meal. So while some of this research is very promising, 
most often they are made under stress-free lab conditions. So going for cheaper feeds in which the manufacturer is replacing too much of the fish meal with alternative proteins can be quite risky and counterproductive in the real-life commercial farming conditions. In the next video, I will talk about the different feeding strategies that can be used to help your shrimp to grow well and healthy. So please let us know in the comments below how your system is doing. And if you found value in this content and would like us to make more videos like this, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to hashtag fish. Thank you very much and see you next time.